this computer is going to be used for uh, a server to run different kinds of games and things like that. Um, as you can see, this is my list. Uh, I didn't have to pay for all of this actually, and that's the main reason why I'm doing this server. It's because some of these items, um, namely the hard drive, uh, RAM, and power supply, which isn't listed, um, I already have, and I did not need to pay for. I also have a license for Windows 7 that came with my old, well, no, not my old computer, my current computer, which I have upgraded to Windows 8. So, I am pretty sure that the license is going to work. But if it doesn't, I will be installing either Ubuntu or Debian Linux. So, let's just go over this build. It's going to be a mini ITX running on the AMD A6 platform with the 5400K 3.6 GHz dual core. I probably could have gone with an i3 or a Pentium, but the reason I chose this one is because of its integrated graphics. Uh, it is very good for integrated graphics, so I'm thinking this computer will be more than a server, actually. It'll be able to do um, uh, basic gaming, pretty much. Uh, run some games pretty well. It's things like Minecraft or uh, Source Engine games like Dota 2, Team Fortress, stuff like that. It'll probably run very well. Um, also, of course, the price point. This was only... $59.99 purchased, um, and I have this in an MSI Mini ITX motherboard that I actually got um, on eBay, which was, uh, what's it called, um, Open Box, I think. So it had already been opened, but never really used. The hard drive that I have uh, put in, a DIY PC, or sometimes it's called Rosewell V3 Plus B Mini ITX. That's actually one of the smallest cases I was able to find that supports a standard power supply. And I also have four 40 millimeter fans and a fan controller. Um, also, it, this isn't actually like a real legitimate server. This is more like what you would consider a home media server. Really, I shouldn't be calling it a server at all, because all it is is a computer that is going to run 24-7, whether it's in hibernate, sleep, or regular, just running mode, and it's going to run gaming servers. So, the, the total I paid out of pocket was 20632, which is very, very low, considering if I were to go out and purchase from a company a Minecraft server for one year, it would be over $100 to get a server with four gigabytes of RAM and specs like this. So overall, this is going to pay off within under two years. So this is a very good investment, at least I think. And because it's for useful for other things other than gaming, well, gaming server that is, it is useful for gaming in addition to running gaming servers. And I could even convert it to run other types of servers to do file sharing or web or things like that. Seagate Barracuda 500 gigabytes. Um, this was taken from a different computer that a friend had that is broken. Um, it is SATA, so it's always good. It will be fast. 7200 RPM, of course. There's the power connectors there. It's really not focusing very well, but... Mm, this camera is interesting to work with. I have not really done a whole lot with it. But yeah, Seagate HP product number is from an HP computer, which is broken. <clears throat> so, 500 gigs. That'll be plenty of storage. And then we have that, put that aside, and get this box, which is actually an inside out uh, Cooler Master power supply box. But that's beyond the point. Uh, let's take this power supply out. Some screws down in there. 
Um, I really need to figure something better out. Here, this is bad. Okay. Power supply. 300 watts. It has a fan on the outside and a green LED. It doesn't have any other fans, but it does have vents. It's kind of unfortunate because this is a small computer. It'll need the, all the cooling it can get, pretty much. Although the CPU will not generate a whole lot of heat, as it's just a dual core, not really that powerful. But it's good enough. There's the inside of it, you can kind of see the internal workings. Although well, that's not really the important part. The important part is this jumbled mess of cables. The 24 pin CPU and some SATA connectors on there. There's another spare SATA thing here. I don't really know what it's doing on there. Um, SATA, where's the Molex? Not here. Okay, here's this. Good. Okay. I was pretty sure this had Molex on it, but it does not. Okay. Um. That could cause problems. How does it not have a Molex anywhere on it? Because I need one. I need one Molex. Uh. I might have to steal the power supply from my old computer and place that one with this one. I need to investigate. As you can tell, none of this is done pre-recorded or anything, so you are experiencing this at the same time I am. And it's not really that good, because it's, uh, it won't work. I need a Molex for a fan, and there's no Molex on this power supply. So, I'm going to have to check into that, but for now, uh, that's where I'm going to leave it. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there is one large capacitor in there. Anyway, um, I did some research online about these SATA plugs, and I actually looked in the old computer, and it turns out it does have Molex connectors, which I assumed it would that power supply. I think that one's also a 300, so it would work with this build. Um, actually, pretty much anything would work with this build. It's very low power. Um, so I could basically take the power supply out of the old computer and put this one in instead. And it'd probably work perfectly fine, but the problem is, is I don't know if it would work perfectly fine. But anyway, the research I did, I found out that the cables for SATA, um, since I'm only going to be using them for a fan controller, um, all I need from this, I can actually cut the head off, all I'll need is the yellow and one of the black ones, I forget which one, but for the ground, because the yellow is 12 volts positive. So I, if I take these connectors off and strip the wires, I can basically just uh, solder them on to the fan controller, which won't be a big deal at all because it's a fan controller. I'm pretty sure that'll work. If it, and now, if I was doing a hard drive or something like that, I definitely would not want to take any chances because that could really mess up the drive. But since it's just fans running through it, it shouldn't matter if it's 12 volts coming from a regular connector or 12 volts coming from uh, a modified cable. But this part right here that I was talking about is, oh, come on, autofocus, do that. Oh, that didn't help. There, that's better. This part here is actually what I think is a extender. So if you plug that part in, it gives you uh, an additional SATA. It's like an extension cord, pretty much. You plug this in with a, uh, with like this right here. I think. Let me see if I can get this with my left hand. Probably not, but you get the picture. Oh, there it is. Kind of crooked, but 
yeah, so that should work. I should be able to modify this extension cable here. And all will be good, I'm pretty sure. But if it's not, then I'll just pop in the other power supply, which does have a dedicated Molex. So I pulled that uh, twist tie off here, and I disconnected this power extender thing. For some reason that cable is white instead of yellow, but I don't think it really makes a difference. I think it's just supposed to look like that. I guess they ran out of yellow color or cable or something. But anyway, I undid all of that, and these cables are actually not too bad. Like, when you bundle them all up, it's a pretty thin cable compared to other power supplies. And I think, like, some of these are... Where's the one? Yeah, like this. It's all bent up and weird. Man, this camera has weird zoom. I'm zoomed all the way out. Yeah. I don't know. But, uh, you can see here, it's a little bit messed up. The cable, it's kind of pulled out to the side. So I might try to disconnect all of these and either put new ones on or just use electrical tape or something. I think I'd rather use electrical tape because it's easier to get off and it looks better. Just a like a black ring instead of having one of these uh, plastic pieces, zip ties. So anyway, I think that is all for today. Um, pretty much the only thing I can do right now is format that hard drive, um, maybe. But once I get all the parts, I'll be back and then we can actually start doing things. Should be getting them a few days. So, the next time that we do this, I will have the parts and we can begin construction of this new computer. So, thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you guys next time.